Hello folks and welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. I am Ed Overstreet and you probably guessed it. I think we're going to have a part five on Andram and Andromeda. You'd think I'd know how to pronounce it by now. Um, there were just things I didn't like about it. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okie doke, here we're where we left off uh, with the last part four. And it's fine. Actually, there's really nothing. There's not a lot that I want to do, but there was a couple of things that I thought I should have done last night. One, I should have showed you how to apply the star reduction because uh, tools, because as tight as the stars are and as colorful as they are, um, it. it it's a judgment thing, but uh, you might prefer it. I might prefer it um, if we reduce the uh, sum. So I thought I'd take uh, time to uh, go over Bill Blanchon's uh, star reduction tools. Uh, he has three processes and a process for creating a starless mask or starless image. And um, also, um, I had great plans that when I uh, did this tutorial. I was going to do absolutely everything in uh, PixInsight. But I obviously didn't know what I was doing when I brought up the uh, game mask for the uh, this lower area of the galaxy that needs some uh, uh, levels of it uh, lit up. And I thought I could to, I thought I could work around and uh, and add it maybe incrementally in PixInsight without having the sharp edge. I knew the edge was going to be there because the gradient for those um, for the that uh, multi-point uh, mask is only on the ends. It, it, it isn't on the sides. So you have those sharp edges on the sides. And then I thought I bet I could have put about six or seven elliptical masks and just uh, inter intertwine them so that it covered the whole thing. And I could apply just one mask with several ellipticals. And, you know, that might work, but it's a lot of work for uh, for doing this. And uh, does it really matter that much? Well, <clears throat> I have a philosophy that no image is ever finished. And for a couple of reasons in my case, one is I've gotten better over the years in processing. Now, I know that's relative. You may not think so. But uh, I know in, in my processing understanding, I've gotten better. Uh, results might not show it. And, and I hope to get better in the years to come. Uh, Lord willing, I'm here. And uh, the other thing is software is changing. And uh, I, I can't tell you how many times a year Photoshop has uh, adjustments off the cloud, but uh, uh, there's usually something going on at least every two months. So that's six times a year, and it may even be more. But they, they happen, these updates happen all the time. You just click on them, they happen, you're updated, and uh, it's painless and fast. You don't have to go out and acquire and buy new software. Uh, it's all happening off of the cloud, the Adobe Cloud. PixInsight is continuously doing upgrade updates. And um, so uh, each time you boot up, you might find one uh, to an enhancement of some sort. So um, since all of this changes in technology and software, uh, you know, it just makes sense to shoot everything in a raw format so that you got Data, you got hard you got hard data to work with and uh, and then in time you may want to go back and revisit now this is the case uh, this is a the good case for the star reduction tool because every almost every one of my long focal length images taken with uh, a Smith Cassegrain not all but too many of them have bloated stars because the RMS for the deck might be 1.2 and the RMS for the RA might be 1.1 and uh, and so they're elongated or it might be that 
uh, I need a 0.52 scale and my RMS is 0.2.1 in RA and 0.21 in deck. That's just going to create bloated stars. So I didn't mean to go off and digress into that, but this star reduction uh, process that's been developed by Bill Planchin really does make a difference on your long focal length stars. It does in my case. So I'm going to show you how to use that with Andromeda, although I'm not entirely sure I am going to apply it. I do like my stars, but there could be fewer of them. And I will put a link to Bill's website uh, on this tutorial. Uh, and I forgot to put the link to Sky Pixels, where Von Hartmann Bornman has his scripts. And I will do that on both the uh, video I did last night and on this video. So uh, it will be there. It will be the first thing I do when I get off of here. So I'm going to do what I didn't intend to do. But I am, in, I am, I really want to make some changes to this image. And actually adding the stars back fixed part of that sharp edge problem because when you add the stars back there's some of that background coming with those stars or it wouldn't have happened and I didn't know that until I added it back so um, uh, it, I thought it was just all stars but there is some background information that's coming back in 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 because I could see the effects of it but it also darkened it some so we're going to go back into Photoshop, and this is what I would have, could have, and should have done in the first place without trying to do everything in PixInsight and screwing it up like I did. So I'm going to save this into Photoshop. I think I already did, but let's make sure I did. Uh, I've got a TIFF file, and let's save it. Also, um, I got rid of my mug because there's too much, uh, yep, yeah. and we're going to 16-bit, yes, okay, um, I got rid of my face in this thing, we, we need to see all the real estate we can, and uh, particularly when we go into Photoshop, so now, let's, I have Photoshop open, I hope I, I didn't close it. Uh, see where it is here all right and let's open up open in 31 tiff how many times have we opened this in Photoshop I would never intended to use it okay now uh, oh, accidentally used the brush tool all right let me get rid of the blood brush tool okay we're going to uh, try to lift some of the light all along this edge. And there's uh, a lot of different ways to do that, but I'm going to use curves. And there's two approaches to that. You can come down over here to this circle with it looks like a half moon and click on that and go up and select the curves adjustment layer. And this is the adjustment layer, and it shows a graph that uh, you can manipulate, which we will. And it also creates a mask. So it does everything for you. You're ready to rock and roll. Now, uh, this works great. The problem I have with it is that this is awfully small, and particularly for a video like this, uh, I'm going to delete this, and we'll, we'll operate a little differently. So this is gone. Now I want to duplicate this background. You can do that by hitting Control or Command J, or you can just go down here to the plus and create a background copy. And what I want to do now is add a mask. So come back down here again, and there's a rectangle with a circle in it, and that is your layer mask. So now I have my layer mask. Now. It's time to talk about white reveals and black conceals. A mask is a covering over your image to the left and anything underneath that's linked to it. 
So this covers up any changes that you make. I mean, this reveals any changes that you make here. So <clears throat> we're going to make some changes because what we're going to do now is go up to image and we're going to adjustments and hang on. I got the mask selected and I need to select my image. We go to image and we're going to go to adjustments and we're going to go to curves. You can also get there by using command or control M. You can get the levels by using command or control L. And I use those interchangeably. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take my eyedropper uh, and I'm going to just click here and see where along the linear line uh, this information lies. So it's in this area. These pixels right here make up the majority of this part of the galaxy. So I'm just going to hit auto and see where that takes me. And uh, that ain't bad. So this made an auto curves adjustment. I may even lift this part. I may anchor this somewhat. And lift this part just a little more. Okay. Let's... Uh, Let's use that. Now, this right now looks pretty bad, and we certainly don't want to go with it. So what I'm going to do is hide it. I'm going to put a black mask over it so you can't see any of the changes that I made. So I'm going to go over here to this mask, and I'm going to hit Command-I. Command or Control-I will invert the mask. Now, uh, the black mask conceals dark conceals, and white reveals. So we're concealed all of those changes we just made with this uh, image adjustment we made using curves. So let's go back to here. We need to have the mask active, and I need to get a paintbrush to paint with because we're going to paint some of these changes that we did like back in. And I have to paint with a white mask. Could you paint with other colors? Yeah, you could pick red, blue, uh, you could go down and pick blues, and uh, but we need a white mask, and so we're going to paint with a white mask. Uh, if you make a mistake and you want to paint it out, flip, and you can paint it back out again. So we're going to uh, use this, and we're going to make the brush a little smaller. Your bracket keys adjust the brush size, or you can go up here and adjust your size. So I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm going to start brushing in um, this underneath part of the galaxy. And add some of what I lost. Okay. Now, I, I sort of like it, but I sort of don't, too. Um... It's just too much. So here's how you deal with too much. One, I showed you a while ago that you can come over here to the uh, to the uh, palette and you can switch this and you can paint everything back out again, which I don't want to do. But I could go back out here with the black mask and I could change the opacity, say, to... 25 or 28 or 25, say 25, and then I could paint down some of this. That's one way. I want to undo that. Uh, an easier way is to, let me get my white paintbrush back again. The easier way is to come over here and use your cursor until you see a hand right next to this fill. Or opacity, either one works. And then left click and drag this to the left and drag it down to say 20, 25, 30. All right, we're at 28. Okay, let's see what difference that made. I'm going to use this eye and click it off and on. 
So we have raised the colors. We don't have a sharp edge. And I don't think we raised it too much. I think it shows the thickness of the galaxy that I was missing. Either I didn't capture it or I already have screwed it up in prior tweaks. Probably a little of both. Okay, a 45 second capture isn't that long for this. It's too long for the core, but it isn't too long for these fainter areas of the galaxy. And I probably should have gone uh, more like 60 to 90 seconds for some of this and bled this back in through blending. Uh, that's back to Photoshop again and using blending modes over here. These are blending modes right here. All these are. Okay, we want normal right now. All right, so this part I like, and I think I'll feel comfortable stopping with this, but I am a little bit, I don't really like the color of my blue, and I feel like there's some unnatural color around here. I keep thinking there's green in it, although it shows it's not green, but I don't like it, whatever it is. So I'm going to come down and make another adjustment layer. And this one's going to be hue and saturation. And again, uh, this is going to probably look hideous, but uh, I'm going to use... Uh, first, I'm going to try hue. And I'm going to look at my image while I drag this up. Nope, I don't want purple. I want to get away from that. I'm going to go to the left. Oh, yes. All right. I'm liking this better. Uh, so we're going to go down to 10. We're at 12. Let's just keep it there. Let's go a little more. In fact, 15. We can always dial down the opacity. Let's raise the saturation up. Oh, yeah. And let's try raising the lightness up even a little bit. That's going to affect my dust lanes a little too. All right. Bingo. Now, we don't want this on everything, so let's uh, select our white mask and make it a black mask by command Control i My effects are gone. And let's start painting in what we did. Oh, we have the opacity dialed down. I wonder what's going on. All right, now we're going to see it. I got to be careful and stay away from the core. Yes, this is, this is, uh, this I am going to like better. And, and you know, you may not. And, and that's a good thing because it's, it's what's, it's what you like. It matters. And, and that's you stop when you get it the way you like it. But then you come back when you think, oh, maybe I do want to tweak it a little differently. All right. All right. Let's see how these changes really have made a difference. If All right. I'm going to hit the uh, Option key on a Mac, an Alt key. I think it's what it is. I'm not positive, but on a Windows machine. And then I'm going to select this eye. And this is what we came in with. This is our original image. And this is our image after our adjustments. So we lost some of that purple violet look, red blue look. And we have raised the levels of light along the edge of our galaxy. So I'm going to dial it down some, probably to about 60%. And let's see how that looks now. On, off, on, off. We may go down another 40%. Down, off. I like it. There's where we're stopping. So I'm going to flatten this layer. 
and uh, layer, flatten. And I'm going to show you three ways that you can save one of these images. Uh, if you're going to save it for a, as a JPEG, then uh, you're going to have to convert it to 8-bit. You can't, there's no 8-bit, there's no 16-bit JPEG files. But we want to first save it as a TIFF because we're going to bring this back into PixInsight and do some star removal. So I'm going to go up to File and Save. And it should save over, which it just did, the um, TIFF file that we brought in. Now I want to save it as a JPEG, so I'm going to go to Image and Mode, and I'm going to go down and convert it to an 8-bit. Now I have the option of saving as a JPEG. And to do that, you have to come down and pick JPEG and save. And I want to replace what's there. I already did that last night and I finished uh, video, I guess, four. Now I want to save it for the web. And it's not easy. It's not as easy. You go to File, you come down to Export, not Save, and you go down to Save for Web. This is a legacy program that they actually took away from Photoshop about seven or eight years ago. And we all fussed because it was such an active tool. In fact, Save for Legacy or, or Save for Web was one of these options right here. And when they took it away, we screamed bloody murder. And they said, well, it hadn't been taken away. Just go to export, but uh, that's fine. They got it. So when you save for the web, you're going to uh, reduce the file size from 25 megabytes to five or 600 K bytes. So let's go to say a 1500 wide pixel wide image. And if you keep this checked, then it makes uh, the aspect ratio uh, precise. We have JPEG as our option. I, this is my, this is what comes up every time because I use it over and over again. I have an 80% quality. It, it keeps the file size down. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I keep very high, um, so, but not maximum uh, selected. <clears throat> um, there's no point in these star pictures embedding the color profile but it's RGB, <clears throat> it's sRGB, and uh, which is what you print with. All printers use the sRGB color space, so you might as well get used to saving all of your images in sRGB. All of your monitors are primarily using the sRGB color space, so you might as well use the sRGB, sRGB color space in your, uh, it's the smallest one, but that's what your uh, monitors and your printers are capable of. Uh, that's the gamut limits for those those devices. So let's save it. And I'm going to save over. I add the word web to it. I'm going to save it and call. I just say click this and it replaces it. Uh, and we're going to click save. Replace. So now it's saved for the web, and I'll show you uh, what a difference that makes. Let's uh, just find another place less cluttered, and let's bring up uh, Astro 2022. We did this in September. It's the only target I've been able to shoot this month. I shot none last month because of clouds. And so here's the web. It's a 665 kilobyte file. Here's the TIFF file. It's 377 megabytes. Here's the JPEG file. It's 24.8 megabytes. So if you're going to put anything on the web, make it manageable. If you're going to put it on AstroBin, make it manageable. You will not see a quality difference. I trust me on this because your limits of your monitor uh, doesn't reveal the uh, detail in your TIFF or your Andromeda. It just takes longer to upload. And uh, in some places won't take that large of a file. So for Facebook, Discord, Astro, Astrobin, use your uh, web 
size if you're a Photoshop user. Okay, let's go back into... I digress, don't I? Let's go back in. It's why my videos last too tag on long, but it is what it is. Um, so we're going to put this to sleep and let's bring up our new image that's been retiffed, I guess you might say. And here she be. Well, we can't see it. I tell you what, it sure looks better with the uh, edge than it looked when we first started this last night uh, when we began part four. Okay, I can work with this. I love it. All right. Um, I want to now make a clone of this. And I want to save this. So if I screw it up, uh, you might think I don't have much confidence in my uh, processing skills. Well, you're right. Okay. Now, uh, star reduction, and then we're done. These are the scripts right here that, uh, right over here, I saved them as uh, uh, they load every time I load my process icons. And uh, thank you, Bill Blanch for putting Blanchin for putting these together. And again, I'm going to put a link to how you can download these uh, on my webs on this uh, YouTube Victor Victor vi video. So uh, the first thing you do, I have at the bottom, and that is to clone for our starless image. And he's already made a uh, a PixInsight uh, expression where you can just go ahead and drag it and it will make an image and call it starless. But it won't in my case, it's gonna call it starless one. And the reason why is because I already have an image that doesn't have any stars that is called starless. And that's what I'll use. But uh, if you had, didn't, hadn't already removed your stars, now's the time to do it. And you're gonna have an image, an additional image just like this, this, that you're going to hit and run your noise exterminator on or uh, whatever noise removal program that you might use. So, since I have it, I'm going to delete this. Now, now I do have a starless image, and it will work off of this image, even though it's not open. So, this is method number one, method number two, method number three. I can tell you in advance, I like method number three the best. But there would not be a method number one or a method number two if they didn't have advantages that appeal to many people. So let's look at them. And you can be the judge as you apply it to your images. So particularly, these, this isn't going to be nearly as effective, in my opinion, as it would be if I pulled up one of my larger uh, focal length, longer focal length images. And I did that, by the way. I've done another video on Bill Blanch and star removal. Uh, it's about probably 10 or 15 videos back. But um, and I think I used a longer focal length. I, I'm pretty sure I did. I don't remember. It's been too long. Okay. <clears throat> so what are your options? What do you change? You don't change anything. You don't have to change anything. You can just drag and drop your triangle, and it's going to remove stars. But did it remove enough? And you may not feel so. And if it didn't, then you can change this red value, this red number, S equals 0.15. To reduce stars size more, you lower the S value, and this is the S value. So if you want to reduce your star sizes more than they are, removed at 0.15, then change this to say 0.14, 13, 10. Um, you can even go the other direction because I did and had 0.20 and didn't remove as many. So you can you could probably lose your job playing around with this all day. But uh, just on one image, you can spend a lot of time going through these different uh, possibilities to get your stars the way you like them. By the way, it doesn't just remove stars, it removes star sizes. That's it. That's incredible. 
So uh, it can remove stars and the size of your stars. That's why the long focal length reduction of star size is so bloody cool. And thank you, Bill Blanchard, once again, for having done this. And another reason why a picture is never finished, because I'll go back on all of my SCT images at some point in time and see if I can't make them even better than they were, not that they were good. My wife says I'm awfully self-deprecating, but I'm really soliciting compliments when I do that sort of stuff. The other thing, if you want to do it, uh, I, personally, I just want to see the main image get changed. But if you want to create a new image and leave your uh, original alone, you can use create a new image, and then you can say, I want an RGB color image, or actually, it's uh, keep it as the target. And since this is the target, you don't have to really change this. But I always change this to RGB color and then drag this and you'll have a brand new image with the stars reduced and some removed. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and just replace this target image and let's run it with 0.15, the default, as my option. All right. Bingo, did its job. Let's go back. It's going to take it a second because it's swapping files on this drizzled image. Before, after. Before, after. Now, how cool is that? Talking about tight stars, but it's too much for me. Before, after. So I surely don't want to go lower than 0.15. If anything, I might want to try 0.20, and let's go back to before, and try this. All right, tad bit better. Before, after, before, after, before. All right, this is method number one. Let's go up with method number two. And once again, I'm going to replace the target image. And I'm going to go back and forth and see how I like it. It's exactly the same format. If you want to reduce star sizes more, then lower the 0.15 to 0 0.10, 0 0.13. If you want to uh, uh, minimize the star reduction, if 15 is too great, go up to go the other direction. So let's try the default. Okay. Uh, there's a lot more going on under the hood in this, uh, this pixel math work. Um, and I'm not smart enough. I'm not the math guy that's going to figure this out. Now, he can go through this and explain to me exactly uh, what, he's, what he's done here. But I still don't have the ability to process the logic. That is not my in my wheelhouse. Um, guys, I am a I was a football coach out of college and 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 that's what I did for a living uh, before I went into financial planning and took on photography as a hobby. So and spent 43 years as a financial planner. So this is not my thing here. Um, and so but here is the prop method two and this is what it looks like this is before and after the stars are not as small but it's removed a bunch they actually haven't been removed they're just so tiny they're just really tiny little points of light precise points of light it's cool looking in my opinion before all right so this is uh, method number two, and we're just going to leave it at that. You can play with those. Your heart's content once you download them. So let's try method number three, and this has an entirely different format. So <clears throat> I stands for iterations, and that's how many times it's going to run through uh, its application. So uh, and M is going to stand for the method that you're going to use. So, number, if you choose one, it's a strong application. If you choose two, it's a moderate, and three is a soft reduction. So, um, 
I'm going to leave it at the default at the get-go at one iteration and we're going to take the strong approach and uh, let's just see what happens. Okay, um, already I like this better. Uh, here is before and here's after. And this is the strong method before after before after so i'm going to go soft i'm going to change that to three and i'm going to go soft so let's go to before and let's try the application of one iteration and a soft method okay and this is where i probably would end up so here's before and after before after before after and I like it I think it's awesome an awesome star reduction approach so uh, folks this image may not still be finished as I was watching it uh, apply the star reduction it took a few minutes and uh, it probably took a minute, but uh, I put it on pause. I noticed that these are not, I'll, I'll, this color down here, I'm, I'm really not happy with it. I wish it was more like this. So I will probably end up at some point in time. I doubt I'm going to do it anytime soon because I'm sick of this now. But I'm ready for something else. Come on, clear skies. But at any rate, uh, this is it for a while. I am going to do a video on how you can take uh, your stars and make them look like they were shot with the Newtonian, more especially your larger stars, where you can get that spike, that diffraction spike, that looks like you have a telescope with a spider, or that you're using a hyperstar and you've arranged your cables so that they are cross. And uh, at it, any rate, uh, that's what uh, I think that's what I am uh, going to do next I'm not positive but I think that's what I'm going to do next at any rate have a great rest of the day clear skies